Hello everybody and welcome back. I'm Dan Fullerton and this is our last lesson on electromagnetism that finishes out the complete series on AP Physics C mechanics and APC electricity and magnetism. In this lesson we're just going to recap Maxwell's equations. Our main objective, students should be familiar with Maxwell's equations so they can associate each equation with its implications. So a brief review, what are Maxwell's equations? Well, the first one we talked about was Gauss's law. The integral over the closed surface of E dot dA is equal to the total charge enclosed divided by epsilon zero. And we found that this was a great way to determine the electric field in cases where you had symmetry. Cylindrical symmetry, circular symmetry, spherical symmetry, I should say, or planar symmetry. And Gauss's law for magnetism, the integral over the closed surface of B dot dA equals zero. Any closed surface, the total magnetic flux through it is going to be zero, which is an implication driven by the fact that we have never found a magnetic monopole. You can't find a north without a south. Faraday's law is when we started talking about electromagnetic induction. The integral over the closed loop of E dot dL is equal to the negative time rate of change of the integral over the open surface of B dot dA, a way to find the induced potential due to changing magnetic flux. And this simplifies to Kirchhoff's voltage law if the magnetic flux is constant. So if the time rate of change is zero over here, the integral over the closed loop of E dot dL, that just says add up all the potential differences around the loop, you get zero. So it simplifies to KVL if you have a constant magnetic flux. And finally down here we have Ampere's law. The integral over the closed loop of B dot dL equals mu naught times I penetrating that surface defined by the closed loop. This was a way of finding the magnetic field. But notice we have our little asterisk over here. There is a little bit more we had to add to it. And let's do that today just to finish this all off. So as we talk about revising Ampere's law, as written, it allows us to calculate the magnetic field due to an electric current. But we also know that a changing electric field produces a magnetic field. We haven't taken that into account yet. So we could say the integral over the closed loop of B dot dL is equal to mu naught epsilon naught times the time rate of change of the electric flux. Or that electric flux we could also write is the integral over the open surface of E dot dA. So another way of looking at how you could create this magnetic field. But we've got to put that together with what we already have. So combining these effects of electric current and the changing electric field, their contribution to the magnetic field gives us a more complete version of Ampere's law. The contribution due to the penetrating current, what we've talked about previously, is known as the conduction current. The contribution due to mu naught i, and again that's i penetrating that surface defined by the closed loop. The new portion is what we call the displacement current the contribution due to that changing electric field as we defined down here. So what we really have to do is put these two equations together and when we do that we come up with this new version of Ampere's law, the modern version, the complete version of Ampere's law. The integral over the closed loop of B dot dL equals mu naught I penetrating plus mu naught epsilon naught times the time rate of change of the electric flux, the derivative of the electric flux with respect to time. That gives us our one, two, three, four equations that make up the set known as Maxwell's equations. Thank you so much for your time. It's been a pleasure here doing the AP Physics C video series. Hope you all make it a great day. And if you need more help, more information, of course, check out aplusphysics.com. Bye, everyone.